Hey, Dan here with Home Meets Road, and to be honest, a filler video. We are currently stuck in Box Elder, South Dakota. Yeah, and we're supposed to be on our way to South Padre Island, Texas, right this minute. And I really wish we would be on our way because there are some serious winter storms coming in. Been seeing as low as 18 at night. So yeah, I don't want to be here. But uh, we have been delayed. We're here for an undisclosed reason. I will promise you we will get to that in another video. But for now, this is a filler. And uh, while we're sitting here at America's Mailbox, which is our home, I figured it is finally time to go over the numbers as to what are our savings of switching to being South Dakotians. All right, I will have some timestamps for you here so you can skip around and go to the section you are more interested in. First, why? Why did we switch residency to South Dakota? Well, when we initially hit the road two years ago, we were still in Arizona. And for the first two years, we kept our Arizona residency. But Arizona is a resident state, so you have to have an address, an actual residency, in order to be an Arizonian. And for the first two years, we used a friend's address. That worked fine. However, we just didn't want to be a burden on them anymore, them having to deal with all our mail and everything. We just wanted an actual company to take over and handle everything for us. Not only that, there are a ton of benefits switching from uh, Arizona to South Dakota. First, for example, taxes. The taxes are way lower here, especially when you're deciding to buy a new vehicle. Arizona is 8.6% while South Dakota is 4 Registration is another. This is a 2018 truck and the registration on this thing is insane in Arizona. Because in Arizona, it goes after the value of the vehicle. It depreciates every year, but it is extremely high, especially when you compare it to South Dakota. South Dakota is a flat rate and that's it. Um, personal taxes. There are no state income taxes uh, in South Dakota versus Arizona. Uh, homeschooling is easier here. There are several laws that are just making everything easier here. But the major, the number one reason is that South Dakota is a domicile state. As far as I know, there are only three domicile states within the lower 48 that is south dakota texas and florida so if you don't have an actual home address those are realistically the three states you're going to end up at and you can choose either one for different reasons we wanted to go with america's mailbox South Dakota had some rules that re we really liked regarding vehicle registration and all that. Um, for example, we have a 1972 Bulls Aero Travel Trailer. She's a complete custom DIY job. Vehicles don't get inspected in South Dakota. If we were, would have gone to Texas, the vehicle would have needed to be inspected and it would have needed to get inspected every two years. I don't even know if Texas would have allowed the vehicle in the first place um, because it is a DIY job. So take it for a grain of salt and take my, I don't, oh my God. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and uh, if you're looking at the three states, make your own decision which one falls into the best one for you. Wow, that was difficult, let's move on. Now let's talk about America's Mailbox uh, being your mail service and really they give you one of these packages that has all the information you need in it. Um, it will tell you what, what you need to do, um, what paperwork they need, 
everything is in there. They really pack it full with everything. Now, I got my laptop here, but I'm going to put the numbers up here for you as well. As far as I understand, just to open a mailbox with them is going to be a one-time $25 fee, no matter what. Now, we ended up going with the Titanium Plus membership. I've got the fees right here for you. Mainly because we have an LLC, we have a business, and we needed a little bit more what that plan gives us. You certainly do not need to go with one like this. This one just worked for us. Now, we ended up putting a $300 deposit down. So we have an open ledger with them of $300. Anytime they do anything for us, paperwork, receive mail, store mail, scan mail, send mail, what have you, that comes out of that fee. Um, and as soon as it just dwindles down, I actually I can show you our ledger right here for the last couple of months. And once that runs down to a certain amount, we will add more. You don't need to do $300, that's just what we ended up doing. Because we knew some of the initial fees in order to register the vehicles would come out of this anyway. So let's talk about vehicle registration. <coughs> ah. Oh man, need some water. All right, vehicle registration. You certainly can have America's Mailbox do the registration for you, which we opted to do but you can also go down to the office and do it yourself. So you can avoid some of these charges, but I'm going to break them down for you here. So for the truck and trailer, I'm gonna list them right here. But long story short, the trailer was $58.56 to get the paperwork going with America's Mailbox for the registration and $95.82 for the truck. The only difference is that the truck has a lien, so there is a lien registration fee, and that is the only difference. So about $150 just to get the vehicles registered through America's Mailbox, and that came out of the $300 deposit that we deposited with them. Now when it comes to them doing the paperwork for you there are two very important documents the first one is a power of attorney saying that they can actually register the vehicle for you and the other one this is the one that i screwed up on and i completely somehow screwed it up i don't know if i filled it out wrong or forgot or whatever but that would be the title um registration form title request form yeah I, apparently i can't read today either the title request form if you follow the instructions this is very straightforward and very easy it tells you exactly what to do and you send this to your vehicle's bank and then they are going to initiate the paperwork in order to get your title and send it to South Dakota. And if you do this and do it early, you will have no issues whatsoever. I would probably give it about two to three weeks for this paperwork to get done. Um, and that is going to be the document that is going to take the longest. Everything else can be done within 48 hours. But that document really needs to get going early. So if you have a loan on a vehicle, make sure the title request form is one of the first documents you're going to work on. Now, actual registration, this is literally right off the registration uh, paperwork I have in here from the truck. For the trailer, the trailer is $85.60. Here's what those numbers break down to. And the truck 
the truck is a hundred and twenty three dollars and thirty three cents and i have that right here and that fifteen dollars at the end that's paperwork issue that's the extra money i needed to come up with there was a late late fee because of the title request so you can nix that if you actually follow the paperwork trail in the first place and do what you're supposed to do yeah so since we are on the vehicles let's talk about the insurance the trailers insurance and i got all the information listed down here is 849 dollars for the year and um you are probably going to wonder who i have insurance with uh foremost so the trailer is uh insured with foremost and this is a full-time policy in arizona we couldn't get a full-time policy on a 1972 travel trailer it was considered too old however here in south dakota we had um almost no issues um the number one thing they required to see because it was a diy rig they wanted to know everything and anything about our propane system we don't have any propane so they were really happy with that the other thing is they said it has to have a stove in order for it to be considered a full-time rv it has to have a stove we don't have a stove so we have a portable induction cooktop that i took out set in the kitchen on the countertop and took a picture of that send that to the insurance company and they said okay that's good no idea but that's what they needed anyway the insurance we have is the trailers insured for thirty thousand uh, dollars we have personal property insured for fifteen thousand dollars and um living expenses for two thousand that's just in case something happens to the trailer and we need to get a hotel or something like that and everything else is listed here so 849 dollars for full-time rv coverage on the trailer the truck is also here are the numbers for the truck 993 dollars for the insurance for the truck now if you're wondering how those numbers all compare let's break those down numbers down real quick so for the insurance in arizona we had the trailer we had to do some funky stuff so because <laughs> you can't have a full-time rv policy on our 1972 in arizona we had a vehicle insurance that included the trailer for two thousand five hundred and seven dollars however that does not include any of our personal belongings that are inside drv so we needed to have a renter's policy on our friend's property that we actually did not live at that was um three hundred and sixteen dollars per year however that really did not cover everything in case something were to happen to the trailer and the truck while we're on the road so we had an additional umbrella coverage of four hundred and ten dollars yeah ridiculous so here are those comparable numbers when it comes to insurance obviously south dakota is way cheaper when it comes to registration the the trailer here in south dakota is 85 dollars for the year 
In Arizona, it was only $16. But that's because it's a 1972 and it, it, in their eyes it was worth nothing. The truck, on the other hand, remember what I said earlier, that it goes after the value of the vehicle. It does depreciate, but it is ridiculously expensive. So going forward, the yearly registration for this truck in South Dakota is $108. In Arizona, we would have paid $502 just for this year. It's insane. All right, let's talk about the last thing, actually getting your South Dakota driver's license and being considered a, not really a resident, um, but for South Dakota to be considered your domicile. And realistically, to show, first, we needed to set an appointment to be at the DMV, but that was because of COVID. Um, I know that they let other people in and they just had to wait in line until a spot opened up. So I definitely would go to their website and make sure what the current requirements are. But what we needed to bring was a receipt that we have stayed in South Dakota for 24 hours. We needed to bring a a residency statement um, basically showing our address at uh, America's Mailbox. We needed to bring our old driver's license because you have to hand that in. So our Arizona driver's license and two forms of ID. So let's talk about that real quick. America's Mailbox has an RV park and they even have a couple of hotel rooms. So you can stay right here. We spent, I think, just under $40 a night here. So one night is good enough. They will hand you a receipt. That is totally acceptable for you to be in South Dakota for 24 hours. The other document is going to be the document that America's Mailbox is going to hand you that they are going to handle your mail for you and that you have an address with them. So those are the two main documents you need. Other than that, bring your driver's license or for your kids, bring, your ID, bring their ID. You turn those in and then you need two forms of ID to show who you are. For Jessa and Braxton, we brought their social security card and their birth certificates. Uh, for me, I am not a, uh, I'm not an American. I am a resident alien. So I brought my social security card and I brought my green card. And those were all the documents necessary for all of us to get our licenses with a gold star on them. When you get there, just keep in mind you are going to sign some, you, you are going to have an application you need to fill out and they're going to ask you to sign a, uh, let me look this up, notarized affidavit. Don't worry about getting that beforehand. I was so worried about getting that. Don't worry about it. Every single person that works there is a notary. They're just going to hand you the paperwork you're going to sign it and hand it right back. They're going to deal with all of it there. So it's $28 and you're good. So it's 28 bucks for me, 28 bucks for Jessa, 28 bucks for Braxton. There is no difference if it's a driver's license or an ID card. As far as I know, a uh, CDL license is $33, but if you are a CDL driver, just check in on that. Now, real quick, let's run down the numbers. Here um, is the total of what we spent in order to establish America's mailbox, change the vehicle registration, and have get our driver's licenses and uh, vehicle insurance. 
So a total of $2,892.18. Now we did get some money back from our previous insurance companies, um, which was $452. So this is the total that we spend in order to transfer over and become South Dakotians. Going forward, if I look at everything, what it's going to cost uh, annually for America's mailbox, putting down a $300 deposit every year for them to have an open ledger with us, um, the vehicle registration and insurance, we're looking at $2,613.80. Versus what we used to spend for the exact same stuff in Arizona, $3,951.48. So that's over $1,300 savings just between our, uh, our mailbox service, vehicle registration, and vehicle insurance. Not to mention taxes and everything else. So yeah we're saving quite a bit of money being South Dakotians. If there's anything I forgot, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy travels.